period where the formula has not beaten the market. Uh, most people give up on a formula that hasn't beaten the market for the last year or two. Uh, you know, I, I sit on a, a couple of endowment boards and, you know, there are some studies uh, that clearly show that you can predict 90 percent of the money flows just on who did well last year. Uh, and that's where their money goes. So uh, th there's two reasons. One, the formula doesn't always work, even though it works over long periods of time. Because when you think about it, what I think you're doing <clears throat> is buying above average companies at below average prices. So you're buying above average companies only when they're available at below average prices. And that makes sense over time. It just doesn't work all the time. It doesn't work every year. Uh, the other thing is if you actually look at the names that you're buying and you, uh, and you read the paper, you wouldn't buy any of them. There might be construction and engineering firms now. Everyone knows the building booms open. There might be uh, pharmaceutical firms. We know health care reform might come, and, and, and the government might pay a little so, less so, so what for are the pharmaceuticals. what are the seemingly looking doggy stocks and industries now? Well, but, right uh, now, uh, still a lot of... Uh, there's consumer stocks. There's construction and engineering stocks. There's, um, there's health care-related stocks. There's uh, pharmaceutical stocks. Uh, a number of retailers with question. There, actually, if you go through the whole list of top-ranked companies, there is a reason, and you know it because you just read the paper, why you wouldn't buy any one of them. You could, and, and everyone would know the reason why you wouldn't want to buy them. So it's actually very hard to do. So the computer is, is telling you to buy these things that do get high returns on capital and are available cheap, but everyone thinks they're, you know, maybe the future won't be as bright. Uh, but, what, but what happens in... in, in in reality, it's only about 60% of the companies actually end up outperforming. You're not sure which ones are going to, so but minimum, you didn't pay much. The minimum number you figure is 20, 24, 25 stocks? Yeah, what I suggest in the book was 20 to 30 stocks at a minimum is what you should do and, and do this over a long period of time. Uh, since you're not doing the have individual you noticed, stock... Uh, have you noticed uh, differences in how the formula works in up markets and down markets? Uh, yes, we've actually looked at that, and uh, it, it, it outperforms quite well in up markets. Uh, in down markets, it outperforms better than uh, the market in most periods, but not all. In other words, uh, for instance, in 2008, uh, when we did our latest study, uh, and here's another problem with the formula, you're 100% long the market if you just buy these. So uh, the S&P was down, I think, uh, 37% in 2008. This was down 36%. So it's a little solace to anyone that we beat the market. There's two things you have to do. Make money. Uh, beating the market's only part of it. So in, in this case, if, if you have a long-term horizon over the last three, five, ten years, this formula has done amazingly well. But there are periods when it either loses money because the market's down or it underperforms the market. Very hard for people to stick with a, a formula that's telling you to buy out-of-favor stocks uh, that were spit out by a computer, nevertheless, you know, nonetheless, um, and, and to stick with that when it's not working. So I'm not particularly worried that I wrote a book or that uh, so many people will do this that it'll stop working. Um, that's also something we have to fight, starting a, a firm that says, um, you know, go follow this formula. And I, you know, I have no uh, huge expectations that people are going to change their stripes over time. I hope we I, ho I hope people see the results and, and, and like what they see, and that's how it's successful. I don't expect... Uh, so what, what, what role do emotions uh, play in this? Can we have a period like we had with the panic where this is just not going to work, or even if it, or if your point is a time it may not, but eventually it's going to come back and come back more? Right. Well, we really haven't had to be that patient even during this bad period. In other words... Uh, over the last five years, which haven't been good, the, you would have been up 72 percent since I wrote the book versus up five for the market. Uh, there have been some tough periods in between. Without those tough periods, everyone, every single person would do this. If I printed a formula and it worked all the time and uh, there was there were no, no volatility to it, you know, you'd have Bernie Madoff and everyone would want to do it, but it really wouldn't uh, continue to work over time. And so it, your club's not going to get overcrowded precisely because of emotions. I think so. I think it's very difficult to buy these stocks. They're, they're all out of favor. Uh, think of an insurance bet. If, if you uh, insure a thousand lives, you, you know there'll be some unfortunate people who bought you know, term life insurance that, uh, that won't work out for next, you know, next year won't work out for them, but you don't know which ones they will be. 
So here you have to buy a group of stocks that on average are cheap and good or above average stocks at below average prices. I can't tell you which one's going to work out. But I can tell you the, the group of stocks that don't work out, you didn't pay very much for them. So even if they don't do so well, they don't usually fall that much. And you get asymmetric returns on any companies that actually do do a little better than the low expectations are for them. So for the companies that do work out, that they do a little better or a lot better than people's expectations, you can make a lot of money on those. And that's really how this tends to keep working. So are there housing stocks that are in your uh, list now? Are there construction engineering companies, you know, that do commercial building, uh, things of that nature? I haven't, no, no housing stocks have really come up uh, recently. I think uh, we still want high earnings and they don't have them. <laughs> now, uh, you have a mutual fund that people can get? I don't. The way formulainvesting.com is set up is that you can open an account online, either professionally managed where you put in uh, let's say twenty five or a hundred thousand dollars and for one percent a year including all commissions we'll follow the formula for you the difference between this and a mutual fund would be the day you come in you get your own unique formula we do we we run the formula every fifteen minutes uh, there's two reasons why stocks move up and down in rankings one is their prices change so you get them cheaper or more expensive the other is earnings change so over time each person every day that comes in will get a different list based on what is the cheapest for the day they come in. And we update the, the portfolio every quarter so that based on the day you came in, you'll be updated on a different day than someone else so that uh, you're not buying into somebody else's portfolio and uh, you're really getting fresh, up-to-date uh, information, the, the most recent information in your own. So it's pretty unique that way. Uh, we, we also have something which is self-managed, which is if you don't want us to do it or you have opinions, I sort of, I, this really started out as a benevolent brokerage firm was my concept where I sort of say you can't buy on margin, you have to buy at least 20 or 30 stocks, but you can only pick from this pre-approved list, companies that rank high as cheap and good. Uh, and anything you don't want to buy, you can uncheck. You don't want to buy a tobacco stock, uncheck it, or you, you don't really like this industry, you uncheck that. I, you know, we've actually, I'm pretty good at managing money. We, um, I started Gotham Capital in 1985 and ret uh, returned all our outside capital at the end of 1994 after 10 years. And we had a good run. We averaged 50% a year while we were running money. But I tried to, to um, and then we returned all our outside capital at that time. So I think we're pretty good at my firm at picking stocks and we couldn't pick out, we couldn't improve on the formula by unchecking the boxes that uh, we thought would do better. So I think really, like I said, it's really best as an insurance bet to take a group of stocks that in general are cheap and good and, uh, and, and, and invest that way. You have a hedge fund as well? We now run a hedge fund called Gotham Capital, but it's really for our proprietary money. In other words, we don't run outside money in that. So, uh, of course, it would seem to make no sense for an outsider to want your hedge fund if uh, they can get it online at 1%, right? Well, this isn't really a hedge fund. This is... Um, this is a 100% net long strategy. It's not a hedge strategy. Basically, for that portion of your portfolio that you'd want to put into equities, this is a nice alternative. Uh, another thing that we'll be launching this quarter, which is really interesting, is uh, a global fund, which looks at 40 different countries across the world. We created our own database, uh, analyzing you, your, those companies. Uh, have you, going back in time, found that this works as well with foreign companies as uh, U.S. companies. Can you trust those numbers? Well, that's a great question. We haven't even, we've looked at the databases internationally and decided that we have to create our own. So going back and looking, there have people have done studies after I wrote the book. There are a number of Wall Street firms that did studies that showed it worked in every country. You know, they tested about 12 different countries. And these principles, value investing, for instance, buying cheap, buying good, works. And all, all these countries, according to their uh, research. We haven't bothered to do that because A, we have no doubt that these principles work, but B, the data is not or are not very good uh, in uh, outside of the U.S. Uh, the U.S. is pretty good. CompuStat, for instance, has a great product and, and a number of others. Outside the U.S., the, the data is not so good so that if, if you use bad data, garbage in, garbage out, you'll, you'll have some of the outliers coming to the top. We decided two years ago that we had to create our own database for the global and we did. We also have our own database for the domestic. And uh, we're going to launch something for formula investing and make it accessible to people uh, to invest uh, in 40 different countries 
in a group project, uh, in a group uh, with about 45 companies in that portfolio. Um, and so that'll be a unique, fun product that we're, we're launching this quarter. Uh, are you going to have a formula that can work for financials and utilities? If I get time, I really started this project about seven or eight years ago with one person. We now have, uh, just in research, we have uh, 17 people working on this now. Uh, and so it's on our list, I would say, but this thing kind of snowballed much larger than I ever imagined when we started with one person. And it was sort of just a proof of concept, uh, you know, of the things I've been teaching and using over the years. And so it's kind of snowballed into a, a big deal. And that's certainly one of the things that we want to develop, but we haven't, we haven't even attempted it yet. We have so much on our plate. Joel, thank you very much. No, thank you. Appreciate the time.